Hey friends, we are now firmly into the month of November, the same month where Ed Walker will finally launch, and I just told the wife she won't see me for roughly one week after early access releases. Likewise, I've taken time away from work to fully immerse myself in the experience, but for those out there like me who's trying to find a way to accelerate the rate at which time passes, well, I made a checklist of things to do before Ed Walker, hopefully to keep us all busy and to make the time pass a bit faster. Alright, firstly, the most obvious, the MSQs. Folks, I know there's people out there who still haven't finished their MSQs for Shadowbringer, and I know this because when I was covering the founder of Final Fantasy Sakaguchi-san playing A Realm Reborn to beating 5.5, it was clear a lot of the comments on my videos about how fast Sakaguchi-san was, and how Sakaguchi-san has actually overtaken some of you guys. And I know a lot of you are still looking to finish your MSQs with Fortnite Walker, and I would definitely say to you, try your utmost best, but don't rush through Shadowbringers or anything like that. That MSQ journey through Shadowbringers is really precious. It's once in a lifetime experience. It's so good that I actually wish I can wipe my memory and go back and revisit the game again. But unfortunately, I can't. So yes, while I know you're eager to start Endwalker with your friends at the same time, don't forgo the experiences that the earlier expansions have to offer. Do not rush through it, it's not worthwhile. And for those who will not start Endwalker at the same time as the rest of the crowd, it might be worth considering not tuning into social media until you beat Endwalker MSQs though, because you definitely do not want to get spoiled by the Endwalker hype train that rolls around on social media once people start completing the MSQs at Endwalker. Just to make sure that you are 100% caught up with the MSQs before Endwalker, you will need to confirm that you have completed the MSQs up to the quest called Death Unto Dawn, it's released in patch 5.5. This will ensure the moment Endwalker rolls around, you can instantly accept the first quest of Endwalker. On top of that, you might really want to consider completing all four role quests that was introduced in Shadowbringers. For tanks, that is to have loved and lost. For the healers, it's called the Soul of Temperance. And for the physical DPS, the Courage Born of Fear. And for magical DPS, a Tearful Reunion. Doing all these four role quests will unlock the epilogue questline Shadow Walk With Me which I would say reveals some really juicy tidbits that definitely surprised me that I shall not spoiler you with, but it definitely lends tons of colour to the whole ASEAN 13 shards and rejoining storylines. I strongly urge you to check it out because the context might be useful with Endwalker given it's the culmination of the Hydaelyn and the Zodiac arc, which is intricately tied to the 13 shards anyway. Pro tip, if you do not have time to level multiple jobs to finish the job quest, you can also just watch people's playthroughs of them on YouTube, just so that you catch up with lore without spending time leveling your jobs. That's something you can consider. The next thing you can consider is to finish all the 8 player raids before Endwalker. And this is not a suggestion for me by the way, this is something that Yoshi P actually recommended players do before Endwalker. In verbatim, this is what he said to PC Gamer when he was interviewed by them back in August 2021. He says, If you would like to talk about the lore in more detail and have a deeper understanding of the world behind the main scenario quest to be found in Endwalker, I would be glad if you played through the calls of Bahamut, Alexander and Omega Raid series if you haven't already. These are not mandatory quests, but they are raids that are deeply rooted in the mysteries around the Final Fantasy XIV world. And he goes on to say that if you want to play through Endwalker with a deeper insight into the characters and their thoughts, I'm sure that these raids will enable a richer game experience. As rightly pointed out by Yoshi P, I really think that these will provide helpful colour for you to better appreciate the storyline when Endwalker rolls around. The TLDR though is to get the three raids mentioned by Yoshi P done, though I would also throw in the Eden's raid just because it does give more context and the lore might be useful. You can get cracking on them, the starting quest and zones are recapped here. You can pause the video to take a screenshot if you have yet to get working on them yet. Speaking about raids, I think it's worth visiting the Alliance raids too if you haven't already done them. As mandated by Yoshi P and team, they make Crystal Tower Alliance raid compulsory for proceeding with the MSQs, and for good reason as people who finish Shadowbringers will let you know. But I'll spare you the explanation to keep it spoiler free, but following the same logic it might be worth just playing through the Void Arc, Return to Ivalice and Nia raids, though I think if you are hard pressed for time, the Crystal Tower and Void Arc Alliance raids are probably the ones that have the most juicy lore tidbits that are directly linked to the storyline in the MSQs. So I recommend doing those two first. But if you have ample time, you should definitely do all four Alliance raids. I've done them all, they are great fights. You can actually start the Alliance raid quest as follows. 
you can refer to the image on the right, you can definitely pause the video, grab a screenshot, get working on them. Something else that you can do, prepare for your Sage or Reaper mains or alts. A reminder that if you're looking to play either the Sage or Reaper for one of your new shiny mains or alts, they use different type of gear sets. The Sage uses healing gear, while the Reaper uses maiming gear. And you will start leveling them from level 70, so if you don't really have starter gear ready for them, you can always go and farm those tombstones or poetic and take them to Rauga's Reach to exchange for easy starter gear. Obviously, the better gear they are, the smoother your leveling experience goes. More specifically, you can work off the augmented Skaven gear from Ina, so make sure to swing by and say hello. Now, if you haven't already leveled up your retainer, now will be a good time to power level your retainers. There'll be a huge influx of new players, and that will definitely send the market bot into a frenzy. Similar to the stock market in real life, there's no better time to make money than when prices are in full swing, something that I'm sure Tataru will agree with. Leveling up your retainers also ensure they can go out there and gather the Endwalker new materials when the expansion rolls around, and I'm sure as per the start of every expansion, materials will be pricey at launch, so you definitely want all the help you can get from your retainers, and you definitely want as much gold as possible going into the expansion. Something to consider too, you can spring clean your inventory and your glamour plates. A new expansion is also a time to start afresh, and you know that fresh feeling when you move into a new place and everything is neat and tidy, or when you tidy up your messy room, it gives you that feeling of zen and no distractions. Well, that applies in-game as well. Clear out the junk in your bags, tidy up your glamour plates for a fresh start at Endwalker. You don't really want to stop the MSQs halfway and fumble to empty your bags because you ran out of bag slots. That's really anticlimactic. Also, you want to look your sharpest for your Warrior of Light's first playthrough of the new expansion. Who knows how many screenshots you'll be taking, so make sure your glamour plates are all set and ready to go. And I almost forgot in my earlier recording, but it might make sense to collect all the minions in the game as well. If you watched my recent video on Island Sanctuaries that I'll link to the top right again, you will know that Yoshi P and team has intentions to allow you to have your minions roam free on your very own private Island Sanctuary that is coming to Endwalker. Now I do not know whether that means that all your minions can roam free together at the same time, but we do know that minions are involved and they are cute, so I'm gonna make it a point to collect them all. So that's my bucket list of the things you can do to prepare for Endwalker, but who are we kidding? We are really doing them to escape from time dilation and to make time pass seemingly faster. But the end is near my friends and our suffering is almost over and we will be soon be able to roam the moon soon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, I won't be able to bend the laws of physics to make time go faster for you. But hey, at least hitting the subscribe button has taken us a few seconds closer to Endwalker. What's on your list of to-dos before Endwalker? Let me know in the comments below. A shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Thanks for watching folks, I will see you soon.